All right, it's the Wednesday evening edition of the Valley's Most In-Depth Weather Forecast video. What a night we had last night. I was here late until about 1.30 in the morning with a tornado warning that was issued for good reason because there was a strong tornado that occurred last evening in kind of a rare spot. We'll talk about all the details here at the top of this video. This is what the uh, Doppler radar wind velocity data looked like at 116 a.m. and a very vivid what we call a couplet here and of course if you're kind of a weather geek if you're a weather nerd you kind of know what this is we're looking at not only the wind speeds being measured by the radar but also the wind direction so you have winds blowing like this over here and more like this right here that's pretty tight circulation to get your bearings here up here is east liverpool wellsville we're in the panhandle of west virginia here in hancock county here's the pennsylvania state line beaver county is over here and so this uh, was obviously a tornado when we looked at not only that but some of our other radar data as well and this was actually one of the best or one of the most prominent kind of tornado debris signatures i've seen in our general region we oftentimes don't see debris signatures that are this obvious this was pretty close to the pittsburgh radar source so the radar was sampling the storm at at very low levels give us a really good picture of what's going on here and this is a debris signature this is what we call co cor <laughs> correlation coefficient easy for me to say on a little sleep um, it's a product that we can use in the winter time to determine precipitation type but it also has a good use when it comes to severe weather picking out where there might be debris being lofted the radar beam is going out and when it is hitting things of equal sizes it returns kind of this magenta ish color when it starts hitting a lot of objects that are different sizes think plywood and tree limbs and shingles and things like that it's going to return a noisier signature with different colors mostly the greens yellows and especially blues and right there there's your debris ball again this is the pennsylvania state line right here so this uh, snapshot was taken at about 1 11 a.m showing an obvious debris signature so i was real confident when i was on television during our coverage last night that uh, we had a tornado on the ground we got on television because part of that tornado warning did encompass far southern columbiana county uh thankfully in for residents of columbiana county the tornado was south of you but for a time from selenville over towards wellsville a tornado warning was in effect so we got on tv in the wee hours of this morning here's the exact track they just completed uh the survey late this afternoon and they found ef2 damage especially in hancock county in central parts of west virginia this started just south and east of selenville went through uh iron ironton and uh Irondale, I should say, <clears throat> and then moved into just across the river over into the panhandle of West Virginia, just missing Chester and Newell and just missing Mountaineer Racino to the south. And this was on the ground for 15 miles with a width of 200 yards, a very impressive tornado. And how rare is this? Well, we looked it up. We, we went through the database and there's not in recorded history. And that goes back, you know, well, well back into the 20th century. There has not been a tornado confirmed in Hancock County, West Virginia, this northernmost county in West Virginia that butts up, of course, against the Ohio River. So this was pretty rare stuff. It began in Jefferson County in Ohio, where there have been tornadoes before uh, in recorded history. But this is the first one uh, in recorded history for Hancock County in West Virginia. And it was just one of a swarm of, a to of tornadoes Tuesday into Tuesday night. Now, you'll notice how separate this activity is from the main cluster. This was in that higher risk zone and several confirmed tornadoes did occur in western Ohio, up into Michigan, parts of Indiana as well, and actually it extended even farther west than that. This activity that impacted far eastern Ohio, a panhandle of West Virginia, parts of western Pennsylvania, was distinctly you know separate from a lot of that earlier activity out across parts of western Ohio. But the ingredients while they weren't as good in our part of the region, they were good enough to produce that tornado for a time late last night. Speaking of severe weather, just a heads up, my banner says tonight, this is actually coming up on Thursday night. Uh, it's uh, kind of your last opportunity in our region for the year to attend a Skywarn spotter uh, training session put on by the National Weather Service. This is in Columbiana County at about six o'clock in the evening. It's free. Um, and it lasts about an hour and a half, put on by National Weather Service personnel. And again, this says tonight at 6.30. I forgot to update this. This is actually uh, closer to 6 is when it begins. You can just show up. You don't have to pre-register. Free, um, and it can last up to two hours. And this enables you to become a certified storm spotter. And when you're a certified storm spotter after taking this class, you can... Uh, 
relay weather information to the weather service and to other parts of the weather enterprise and uh, the weather enterprise will pay close attention to your spotter reports because you've had formal training in picking out different types of clouds and different types of weather phenomena. So this is at CCCTC in Lisbon again around six o'clock or so coming up on Thursday evening. All right, the severe weather threat on this Wednesday evening has shifted off to the south. Tornado watches in, in red for parts of the Mississippi Valley, the lower Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley. We've had some heavy thunderstorms in parts of the Carolinas as well. The uh, There's a whole slew of severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings uh, in this kind of arcing zone right through here. It's a busy, busy night in through that part of the country. Uh, the Weather here locally, fantastic, as promised. It was a beautiful afternoon. It was warm, but the dew points came way down. Part of our ingredients for the severe weather across the region yesterday was muggy for this time of the year, but the dew points have come crashing down into the 40s. It is just a delightful Wednesday evening. The severe weather risk on Thursday will be focused mostly on the mid-Atlantic states, D.C., down to Raleigh, down into parts of the Deep South as well. But you'll notice there's a little bit of a, an appendage here in the Storm Prediction Center outlook uh, that butts up into parts of eastern Ohio, West Virginia, Western PA. That's a low end one on our one to five scale risk. And with this, actually, they carved out, they kind of introduced a 2% tornado risk contour, which encompasses parts of far eastern Ohio, uh, northern West Virginia, parts of Pennsylvania as well. Uh, there's going to be a front that, again, is just kind of stalled to our south, and there's enough wind shear around that front tomorrow that anything that tries to get going, I think especially down towards, say, Morgantown um, and down into Maryland and closer to the nation's capital, uh, could have some rotation potential with it. This outlook technically gets up to about Route 30, up to about Lisbon, but I do think you have to go south of our viewing area to have the best chance of some sort of misbehaving uh, thunderstorm late tomorrow into tomorrow evening. We'll be on the cooler side of this front in most of our area tomorrow, which means it's going to be a much different day. We're going to be hard-pressed to get into the 60s tomorrow. In fact, in our northern viewing area, we may crash back through the 50s in the afternoon with a stable and cool air mass, some showers around. Again, more of a concern for thunder and possible wind shear issues causing some rotation the farther south and east away from Youngstown you go on Thursday. So just plan on a damp one and a cool one. And actually, more of the same coming our way Friday with this trough of low pressure nearby. It's not going to rain all day. Best chance for showers is probably in the morning on Friday, but there's going to be some damp weather here and there. And here comes the next weather maker on Saturday, quickly moving down through the flow. If this were the dead of winter, we'd be talking about this kind of an Alberta clipper type system, snow showers, things like that. Um, but of course, it's May, so this will be rain showers and perhaps a thunder shower from midday into the afternoon on Saturday. Mother's Day should shape up to be a fine day, although it's going to be cooler than the average, but we are going to turn the corner next week. You know, we've been talking about this cooler pattern for mid-month. I think it's here for about four days, five at the most, but then we start to turn the corner. In fact, we turned the corner a little faster than I thought we would when I was talking about the longer range at the same time last week. So by the time we hit the 14th, 15th, 16th of the month, it does look a few degrees warmer than the average after a cool stretch at the end of this week and into the weekend. Thanks for watching this Wednesday evening edition of the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video coming up on Thursday. We'll have a full update on rain chances for Friday and the weekend, including on Mother's Day, and taking us into next week as well. We'll take another look at the longer range in Thursday's video. Look forward to seeing you then. Have a great rest of your Thursday night.